brothers and sisters, welcome to another day, the sixth day, and today's theme is spiritual moments. Brothers and sisters, I hope by now that you have your book, but I know many of you may not have the book, and so hopefully these daily reflections are helping you at least with the journey. And don't forget to go to catholictt.org, which is the one-stop shop where you can find all the information about the journey. And don't forget, it's never too late to join our journey. So today, brothers and sisters, spiritual moments. And Matthew, in his book, on, in today's reflection, speaks about how the journey to heaven is a great journey. And it is not no meager spiritual endeavor. It's a great spiritual endeavor to be able to, to enter the courts of heaven and to be transformed into the living God, even while journeying on earth, which is what grace is in our souls, is what grace does to us. Grace transforms us ever more into God's very life. And so the spiritual life, Matthew Kelly points out, takes seasons. You know, there, there are times where we feel great fervor and rigor, where we, we're on top of the mountain and we have a real sense of God's presence. We have a sense that God is close to us. But then there are times in the spiritual life where we feel rather abandoned by God. We feel that our prayers are falling on deaf ears, where we feel that the Lord has forgotten us. Might be some trial, some affliction, some disease, some really indescribable, painful torment that has come back to memory from the past. Or it could be, it could be anything. But in those moments is when we have to, to go deep into prayer and to, to really hold the Word of God and the witness of Jesus' life and the witness of all these saints to us that God is real and He is in fact in those moments of seeming abandonment, in the dry moments of the spiritual journey, that in fact God is, is ever more alive and active in our life. And we can look at the cross, brothers and sisters, to see how on the cross, at the height of Jesus' life, it looked like failure. It looked like absolute abandonment, that God, had for, that God the Father had forsaken His Son. But nothing was further than the truth. And that's the whole point of the, the mystery of the resurrection coming forth from the cross, that, that God brings forth great glory from the seeming desert and desolation of our own lives. And so just, this is just something to us to think about. But another reason that Matthew Kelly doesn't go into per se, but you know, one of the reasons we experience maybe desert times in prayer, or dryness in prayer is also lukewarmness. The fact that maybe we are not living fully for God, that, that we are engaging in some serious sins that are really weighing us down and, are, that I, and I would say just devouring God's presence in our life, making us lose that contact with God, that, that sense of God. And sometimes that is too because of our sin. And so we have to be, take, take stock. We have to be honest with ourselves and we have to, to, to take stock that my life's not in, in perfect order, so now I have to put it into order, that I have to turn back to the Lord and seek Him with all my heart. And so we might seek the sacrament of confession, which is in great um, you could say is really there to order us back to the Holy Eucharist in, in, a, in a way that will allow us to draw more power from, from the Holy Eucharist. You know, certainly if we're in a state of mortal sin, we need the sacrament of confession to resurrect our soul back to life so that we too then could be back in communion with Jesus. And so that when we receive Holy Communion, we would be able to be nourished very deeply in His life of grace. Brothers and sisters, in this day, Matthew Kelly speaks about the different lessons uh, that, that work for his life, that pull him through the, the dry times, the difficult times, or even help him to be steady in the high times with, with a strong sense of God's presence. And he's worked out these lessons. And I just want to go through that with you again and maybe highlight one of them. Well, he says that the first thing about his own let these six lessons is, is the first one is the, or what he calls the first shift, is just begin the conversation with God. Even in our dry times or difficult times, still talk to God. Or even if in the high times, and well, hopefully in the high times we have the sense that it's easy to talk to God. But, but if we're now beginning on a spiritual life, make sure that you have a conversation with God. Second shift, ask God what He wants. Not so much that what we need to, from Him, but have a a real honest conversation with the Lord. Lord, what are you seeking in my life? What do you want for me? And then 
You know, the third shift, he says, give yourself to prayer. Waste, and that's what I say, waste time with God. This is very important uh, in, the, in the spiritual journey to, to come out of the dryness at times or to, to keep the fervent times more fervent is prayer. We need to find times every day to waste time with God, to speak to God, to, to, to connect and to raise our minds out of the din and the noise of this world and, and the chaos sometimes of our interior lives to, to remember that there's a bigger picture. And in meeting God, His Spirit does something to our spirit and starts to reorder our lives. The fourth shift He speaks about is transform everything into prayer. So bring everything into those moments of silent prayers, but also throughout the day, live as if you're living on a prayer. The fifth, the fifth shift is make yourself available. So do you wish to know the supreme secret of happiness? Make yourself available. And then the last shift, He says, just keep showing up. We're going to speak a little bit more about that tomorrow, but just keep showing up. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you. Thank you.